After 16 and a half long years on death row, Billy Moore's execution date was set for May 24, 1984. No more appeals, no more court dates, no more postponements. Then a few weeks before his execution, he says there was one thing he felt the Lord told him to do, write a letter of apology to his victim's family. How do you write somebody and apologize for killing their father or their brother, their uncle? And so the letter was simple. I said, if you can find it in your heart to forgive me, I would appreciate it. But if you don't, I understand because I don't forgive me either. If I was you, I wouldn't do it either. I began to get letters back where they wrote me back and said that they're Christian people and that they forgive me. When I wrote them back, telling them that I really appreciate what they did, they wrote me back and it started a correspondence that we were writing every week. The day finally arrived when Billy was taken to the death watch cell. He would stay there for 72 hours before being led to the electric chair. When I went to the captain's office, he said, here's your execution warrant, you know, you got to read it. That makes things final. Then says, after we kill you, what do you want us to do with your body? We can bury you here or your family can come and get your body. It's like you preparing for somebody else's funeral, but it's yours. Fear flooded Billy's mind as he walked to the death watch cell. I got this manual about actual executions, what has happened to certain people when they were executed, how their eyes would pop out of their head, how their teeth would shatter, and how the skin would catch on fire, and how it would defecate on their self. And, and all of this is going through my mind. It's like, God, is this going to happen? When the current hits, is it going to immediately kill me? Or am I going to linger on? Billy tried his best to stay calm. He read his Bible, but the intense pain of what was to come distracted him from focusing on God. The smell in this area, you can smell the antiseptic, but you can also smell the burning of flesh. You can smell death in there. Billy did his best to focus on the Lord and remain calm. Then something occurred that instantly turned his focus into fury. It was a letter from Billy's ex-wife explaining that Billy Jr. was not, in fact, his son. After reading that, it was like I was just hit in the stomach by Mike Tyson. It's like just all the air just came out, and it's like I'm just going to have a heart attack and die. As he struggled to get control of his thoughts, Billy says the Lord spoke audibly to him. You shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. I'm saying, Lord, is this you? Are you telling me that I am not going to be executed? I'm saying, God, how do I stand on this? How do I make this mine? And, and it comes, you know, faith comes by hearing. I said, okay, I get it. I got to say this. So I'm walking back and forth in the cell, saying, Jesus said, I should not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. God said, what did you say? I said, Jesus said, I should not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. He said, what makes you think you're going to live and your friends died? I said, Jesus said, I should not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The guards began preparing Billy for execution. They were about to shave his head. Suddenly, they were interrupted. The sergeant came out of the office and said, what are y'all doing with him? He said, we're going to shave his head. He said, no, you're not. I just got a phone call from the 11th Circuit Court of Appeal. Billy had received a stay of execution seven hours and 15 minutes before the scheduled time. What Billy didn't know was that his victim's family not only forgave him, but they, along with local groups, petitioned the courts to set Billy free. He spent six more years in prison. Then on November 8, 1991, Billy was released. He is now married and an ordained minister who travels the globe speaking about the power of forgiveness. He remains in contact with his victim's family and Billy Jr. Christ forgave me in the same way and the same power that he has forgiven me is extended to everyone. Uh, people think that I'm special and God done something special for me, but when we look at it, he did something special for all of us when he died on the cross. And for, as he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do.